How's it going everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple platformer game. Looks something like this. You have platforms, they move around, you can jump on them. When you get to the end goal it resets you and I don't know if you can tell but these platforms move more every time you get to the end so it gets harder and harder and you can also fall off the edge and die. It's a pretty exciting game and I'm really excited to teach you guys how to make it so let's get right into it. The first step to creating our platformer is letting our cat move around here a little bit. And to do that, there's all sorts of different ways of creating movement systems. Uh, one really simple one is to grab a when click start and in a forever loop, we're just going to put a check for if each of the different keys are pressed. So in this forever loop, we'll put a check for if the key pressed is A, then we'll go to the left, change X by, remember X is left, right, and Y is up and down. So we'll change X by negative five before pressing A. And if we click start, you can see that works. And then we're going to do something almost exactly the same for if we're pressing D. If we're pressing D, we will go, we will change X by 5. And now if we press start, we see we already have a decent movement system here of going back and forth. It would also be great if we could have our cat look left and right when he's moving. So when he's going left, he looks left. And it's actually very easy to do that. All we need to do is grab this point in direction block over here and you go ahead and drag it into both of these. If we look at our little diagram over here, 90 degrees is this way, and typically when we turn, this is 90 degrees, and this would be negative 90 degrees. And that's not really what we want. We would like him to not go upside down. We just want him to flip the other way without going upside down. And there is actually a really easy way of doing that in Scratch. If you change the rotation mode from all around to left-right, then when we change him to point to the left here, he actually just flips to the left instead of turning upside down. So to do that in our code, we want him to point 90 directions when we press D, because that's right. But when we're pressing the A key, we're going to go left and we want him to point the other direction. So we'll flip this around to negative 90. And now if I click start again, he'll flip when we uh, press A and D, which looks a lot better. One of the most fundamental things we would need in a platformer game is gravity. And it's actually really easy to program in gravity. All you need to do is create a forever loop. And inside of that forever loop, we're going to constantly move the player down. So we are going to say change their Y by a negative value because a negative y means down so we'll just always change their this value by negative five when we click start we'll see the player will just fall until they get to the bottom of the screen now obviously that's not all we need to do that does create gravity but usually you want a floor or something to catch you at the bottom of course right now we don't actually have anything on our stage so let's go ahead and create some platforms for ourselves I'm going to go ahead and pick a really simple sprite for this. And now what we want to do is we don't actually always want to change the character's Y by negative 5. We don't always want to move them down. We only want to move them down if they're not touching this color green, one of these platforms. So to do that, we can go in and grab an if statement and say if we are, and go into our operators and grab not, if we are not touching the color, and then we can say touching color, and we can pick the color here. So this like green color here. If we are not touching this color, then we'll change Y by five. So now if we click start, we move down, but as soon as we're touching that middle bar there, that color, we stop moving down. And now we can actually land on things. I'm gonna go ahead and create one or two more of these, something like that. The other thing we'll wanna do is let him jump. That would be nice. So in another loop, I'm going to add a when click start and inside of a forever, we're going to check if the player is touching the key space. Oh, we need an if statement. So if key pressed is space, then what do we want to happen? Well, we do want to change Y and we want to change Y by a positive amount. So let's say we change Y by uh, 50, let's say. Now, if I press space, oop, if I click start and then I press space, that doesn't really do exactly what I want. That causes him to just jump up. And I also, I can hold it down and he just goes up forever. So there's a few problems with this. Uh, first of all, I would like him to not jump all at once. I'd like him to like go up and then come back down smoothly. And to do that and make that sort of animation look smooth, we're gonna use a repeat block. So if I go in here and I put a repeat around this change Y by, and then I change it to a smaller number, like maybe five, that repeats 10 times. So we'll go up a total of 50 Y. If I do this, you're gonna notice I actually don't seem to go up at all. And that seems kind of strange, but think about what's happening here. We have one block when I click space, it tells us to go up by five, but we have another block telling us the exact opposite thing. This one's telling us to go down by five. So you have to remember, you have to go up more than you're going down in order to actually let the player jump. So if I go up by 10 instead, and now I hit space, now we go up and we also can come back down. And there we go, we can jump around a little now. 
There is another problem with this that I want to point out though, and it's that we can just run straight into the platform like this. And the problem is, the reason we can do that is because all we're checking is if our player is not touching the color green. So even when our, if it's not our player's feet, technically right now our player is touching the color green, it's not their feet, it's their head, but they are still technically touching the color green. It'd be much better if we could detect that only our feet were touching something. The way to do that in Scratch is to go into the character's costume and add some color to the character's feet right here that's different from everything else in your game. So we could take this purple color will work. We can take this purple color and add a little bit onto the bottoms of his feet right here. Then we can go back into our code and instead of checking if we are not touching the color green, we're going to check if a specific color on the character is not touching this color green. So for instance, I can go here and I can grab this purple color. And then I think this is already the right green, but we'll set it again just to be safe. And so now what we're checking is if the color purple on our character is not touching the color green in our game, then we're going to change Y by negative 5. Now if I put him below this, he'll fall right through the middle of the platform. So now I can't just do this and survive. I have to do something like this, and my feet have to actually touch that next platform to get to it. There are still a few more problems. One problem you might notice is that we can just hold down space and our cat will just fly off into the sky and it makes it really easy to beat any uh, any game. We probably don't want that. Now we could just add something like wait one second and that would do a lot better. So we repeat 10 times going up and then we wait one second before it comes back and can run this if statement again and get the key pressed. And that does help, that does make it better. But if I'm falling a lot, I can still jump from in the middle of the air. And that doesn't really make any sense. So what we really want to do is not just wait for one second, but wait until our character comes back down and is touching the green here. So what I want to do is inside of this if statement after the repeat is I want to wait until our feet are touching the platforms, which is what this means, right? If the color purple, which is our feet, is touching the green of the platforms, then we will reset this and we'll be able to start the loop again. Now if I restart this and I hit space, I can only jump after my feet have touched a platform which makes this a lot harder. And actually, I'm realizing it makes it impossible. So we'll make our jump height maybe a little higher. There we go. Those are really all the basics you need to start creating your own platformer game. I'm gonna add on a little more to this game just because it kind of looks incomplete to me. Uh, I'm gonna throw on a backdrop. We'll grab the Nebula backdrop. So this is, a, this is an in-space platformer. And then I also want to have a condition where we lose the game. And so the condition I want to lose the game is when the character falls past a certain point, like down to here, then they lose. So you'll notice when we look over here at our character's Y value, it's down at negative 214. So what I want to say is anytime our character is below the value negative 200, it means they've lost and they're going to have to restart the game. To do that, I'm going to add on another forever loop. And in this forever loop, we're going to check if the character's y value, their height, is lower than negative 200. And so to do that, we will go over to operators and grab one of these less thans. And then uh, in motion, we can actually get the player's x and y values as well as their direction right here. So we're going to check if their y value is less than negative 200. Now, instead of ending the game, I actually just want to reset the player back to the first platform. So what we'll do is I'll go back over here and I'll grab the go to position and we'll have them go that's the start position i want them to kind of like drop down a little bit so that when they spawn in they like drop down a little i just like that effect so we'll move them up a little bit more so it'll be closer to negative 125 x and zero y and now when i click and we also want them to go to that position when we click start so when we click start we'll go to that position and then we'll forever reset ourselves to that position if we go below negative 200 y so now when i click start uh, I start right there, I fall in. If I drop, then it resets me back up to the top. Let me also throw in a victory condition here. So we'll throw in another sprite that says, and we'll put the apple right here at the top. Whenever the character gets to the end goal, gets to the apple, they're going to get reset to this position, but the level is going to go up. And when the level goes up, some things about the game are going to change. Like maybe the platforms will start moving uh, and stuff like that will happen. To do that, I'm going to need a few things. The first thing I'm going to need is a variable that tracks what level I'm on. So we'll create a variable called level. And then I'm going to make all my platforms move around more depending on how high the level is. So the higher the level, the more the platforms move around. To make the platforms move, I'm going to click on one of them. Then when we click start, we're going to grab a repeat block here. And we're going to start changing the X position by different amounts. 
So I'm gonna go here and grab a change X by, and it's gonna change by the level number. So at low levels, it'll not move at all. So at level zero, this won't move at all because it'll be changed X by zero. But when we get to level three and four and five, it'll start changing X by three and four and five, which will be more and more movement. I'm also gonna grab another one of these and I'm gonna change it by a negative number so that we have it move both forward and backwards. So to do that, you can do something like this. We can say zero minus the level, which is negative. And then we can test that out real quick by setting level equal to three or something like that. And then clicking start here and you'll see it moves backward and forward. And then we want that to happen forever. Now we have a moving platform. Now to make our level actually increase, we need that when the character touches the apple, we're gonna reset their position back to here. And then we're also going to increase their level by one. So I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, another if statement here and I'm gonna put it inside of this forever that's controlling when we lose so that it also controls when we win and I'm going to say if we are touching the apple then we're gonna reset our position oops just like we did before just like when we lose but this time we're also going to change our level by one so it'll increase our level we also need to set the level to zero when we click start so we start at level zero and now when I, okay, if I don't lose, apparently I made this game too hard. There we go, now we're at level one and the platform starts to move a little bit. At level two, it'll move a little bit more. At level three, it'll move more. And eventually it might even get difficult. I'm actually gonna add this code to all of our platforms because I don't think this game is hard enough. I am noticing another problem. You see our platforms are kind of drifting away from us here. It's possible they start too far away for us to reach. So I'm gonna drag them back to exactly where I want them. To do that, we're just gonna drag in this go to XY block here and it should by default be set to its current X and Y position, although sometimes it isn't, so you have to keep an eye on it. Now when I click start, they'll get reset every time, and I'm gonna lose the game because I'm terrible at this game. There we go, now they all move, <laughs> and they all move more and more. There's all sorts of things you could do to add on to this game, make it more complicated and interesting. I strongly encourage you to do that. Just for fun, I'm gonna throw in a couple of sound effects real fast. So in sounds, I'm going to grab a, uh, boing sound effect and then whenever the player jumps it's going to play that sound effect of boing so we'll start sound boing if we are touching key pressed space there we go i also want the apple to make some kind of noise when we get to the apple so we'll play the meow sound effect when we get to the apple and then when we lose i also want to play another sound effect so we'll grab the, we'll grab the bonk sound effect. So when we lose, we will start sound bonk. And what game would be complete without background music? So let's, let's go to our backdrops here and find some, find some background music. That one, I like that one. And then we will in a forever loop we will play that background music until it's done, and then we will start it again. And there we go, we have a pretty complete game on our hands. I hope you guys had fun making this game, and I will see you all in the next video.